r slash supernova revenge. I wanted my father to understand I wasn't coming. This is my first time posting. Sorry for the formatting. My parents divorced when I was in first grade. Not only did my dad disappear like Houdini, he stole my mother's ATM card to her personal account and drained her dry. My mother being the son she is didn't even bat an eye. She still was cordial to him and never said a negative word about him. To me, my dad, albeit abandoning us was still my hero. From first through fifth grade I had the usual abandoned by dad stories. Maybe one or two visits in a year and a 50 times of me waiting by the front window with my suitcase packed to go to his house and him never showing up. My mom through all of this was supportive and never said an ill word about him. So he still stayed my hero. When I was in 6th grade my mother finally remarried and my father who only had a picture of me at 8 months old in his wallet went ballistic. Did I mention he never paid child support? He would use his father's social. They had the same name. To get away with it. After my mom remarried, he let it be known that I was now my stepdad's responsibility. He cut off communication with me until I graduated high school. He didn't attend my graduation or send a card. What he did do was write me an email thanking god he no longer had to pay child support. He didn't anyway. What really broke me was his ruthless and brutal attack on my mother. Attacking her weight, looks, teeth, and blaming any perceived negative traits that I had on her. For the first time I realized what an cowardly piece of shit he was. I responded in kind. He told me I was no child of his and that I was a waste. After that I vowed that I would hurt him. 10 years later, my father, not interested in my wedding or my son reached out to me. You see he is a diabetic, and one of his organs were failing and he didn't have long. He's too far down on the list and he needed someone in our family to donate. Nuclear revenge activated. I answered his email. I met up with him and pretended that I didn't hate his guts. I went and got tested to see if I was a match. I was. Did the therapy and met with doctors and his therapist. We scheduled the surgery. The day of the surgery we meet at the hospital. I smiled in his face and let him know that I wouldn't be going through with the surgery. I watched the confusion line his face. I just wanted you know that you're no father to me and you're a waste. I left the hospital and drive home. My mom was pretty annoyed with me that I took it that far. My father is dying and I will be attending the funeral out of spite. And I will let everyone know what a piece of shit he was. TLDR. Father abandoned me and called me a waste. Later in life he needs an organ. I agree and match with him and abandon him at the hospital the day of the surgery after calling him a waste. He will die and I will ruin his funeral. Edit 1. This really blew up. For those questioning my actions I will give further detail. My father was as semi-obsessed with my mother. His attachment to us was only in his perceived ability to get back with my mother. In the beginning he would call and make plans to see us. And just not show up. My mom would have to make up excuses. He has been married over 4 times and supports and loves his stepkids without a thought to us. Once my mother remarried he was done with us. He kept in contact with my mother through email but had no interest in talking to his children. I have reached out to him before. To invite him to my graduation. To let him know of my marriage. And that he was a grandfather. All I got back was pictures of his new wife's kiddos. Upon getting to know him after agreeing to donate. I went to one of his therapy sessions at his request. There I heard the story of the true reason he contacted me. I listened as he lamented about his impending death. How he was resigned to his fate, only to have his new wife remind him of his former kids and maybe one of them will donate. And he got excited because he had forgotten all about us. And it was like hope renewed. Do you know how shitty it is to listen to the person who is responsible for your very existence talk about forgetting your very existence? Like I was a pair of sturdy old boots that gathered dust in the back of the hall closet. Now rediscovered I was to be worn to go shovel shit. I knew then I wasn't going to give him anything. Thanks for the silver and gold. Edit 2. I'm not worried about a will or being left anything. He had nothing to leave. He's the male equivalent of a gold digger. He only marries women who can take care and support him as he mooches off of them. He stole thousands from my mother and she didn't press charges because she didn't want her children's father in jail. My mother was his first wife and he learned his lesson not to have kids of his own but to move into ready-made families. His ex-wives and their children have nothing nice to say about him. When I told him I wasn't going through with it, he understood exactly why. 
He nodded his head in understanding. I already was approached for money to contribute to the funeral and I will. Child sees family murdered in World War 2. Tracks killer down and befriends him. When separated murders him in Indochina. Eliyahu Itz Kovitz. Pronunciation. During World War 2. Young Eliyahu Itzkovitz saw his entire family murdered by a Romanian guard in the Chisinau ghetto. And later did much the same thing to said guard. All Itzkovitz knew of his nemesis was his face and last name. Starnescu. Yet he nursed his hatred for the better part of a decade. Until fate finally recognized the makings of a good action movie. While serving in the Israeli army in 1953. Itzkovitz learned that Stanescu had joined the French Foreign Legion and was somewhere in Indochina. Realizing this was his shot at revenge. Itzkovitz went into full Batman mode. He arranged a transfer to the Israeli Navy. Only to desert in Italy. He made his way to Algeria. Joined the Legion. And went through their insanely rigorous training. Yes. He trekked through half the world and joined the goddamned foreign legion based on nothing but a vague rumor that Stanescu was there. That's dedication. Having completed his training, and gaining lots of handy murder skills in the process, Itzkovitz managed to get deployed in Vietnam, where he told his commanders that he should be stationed in Stanescu's unit because he had history with the man. The commanders failed to register the ominous thunderclap after those words, assumed they were friends, and accepted. And so Itzkovitz found himself sleeping in a tent next to the man who murdered his family. Eliyahu must really care about his equipment. Every time I see him, he's outside my tent, sharpening a knife. Stanescu didn't recognize Itzkovitz, which the latter used to his advantage by becoming one of his most trusted comrades. Soon, they were laughing bonding, and volunteering for patrols together. Finally, during an ambush by Viet Minh forces one day, it covets his chance came. They were separated from the rest of their squad, and took cover in the mud. Stanescu, it's Kovitz called out, I'm one of the Jews from Chisinau. It's, not the best vengeful one-liner, but we imagine it got the point across. If it didn't, the fact that Itzkovitz's follow-up action was to empty his Tommy gun into Stanescu's chest definitely did. He thought speaking in bullets was better than a pun. We tend to agree. Stanescu's death was pinned on the enemy. Itzkovitz served the remainder of his foreign legion stint and returned to Israel, where he was immediately slapped with a desertion charge. However, upon learning his story, the court gave him the lightest possible repercussions they could get away with. One year in prison. Dark How SS guards were given their retribution. This is a repost because the last one got removed. When I contacted the mods, they said it was because my post barely got any feedback. So, on with the story. When the Dark How concentration camp was liberated in April 1945, American soldiers from the 45th Thunderbad Infantry Army Division found over 2,000 dead bodies stuffed into 39 train cars nicknamed the Death Train. The sight unleashed a brutal reaction from the US soldiers. In an act of brutal revenge, up to 75 SS guards were lined up and executed by machine gun fire without trial. Other killings took place at other locations in the camp. According to some sources, the US soldiers gave some of the 35,000 liberated inmates handguns. The inmates then killed and tortured several SS officers some were beaten with shovels and hammers. While one man was literally torn apart. This incident however, was a war crime that was covered up by army officials. And in the 2000s, documents were released and revealed the Dachau massacre to the world. TL. DR. The title. Can confirm. My grandfather fought for the English and liberated smaller camps near, I believe, Hamburg. They made it a habit of turning over their guns to the liberated people and watch them slay the Nazis. But he only spoke to me about it once though when he was extremely drunk. It haunted his dreams. Not the Nazi slaughter, but what he saw was done to people in those camps. Taking down Bradozilla. I went to a sort of pre-pre-bachelorette party for a sorority sister who I hadn't seen in a while and who turned out to be a complete Bradozilla beach. One of our other friends from college is pregnant from a one night stand and does not know who the father is but is keeping the baby. Bridazilla figured out that she is going to be about 8 months pregnant at the wedding and wouldn't let her be a bridesmaid. She was really nasty and called her a tramp and said she should have gotten an abortion. The girl got really upset and left. Almost everybody else did too. 
One of the girls out partying with us is a nurse practitioner. She invited the remaining girls back to her apartment. I don't know what she gave Bridazilla, but she was out cold really fast. That's where it got really weird. I had had way too much to drink and crashed on the couch when the other girls left. I woke up a couple of hours later looking for the bathroom, and I walked in on the nurse and Bridazilla. Bridazilla was still out cold, but the nurse had her naked from the waist down and on the bed with a bunch of pillows under her and her legs spread like she was giving her a Gino exam. I then saw her hold something up and laugh and I realized what she had just done. She had removed Bridazilla's IUD. I got really upset at first and started yelling at her that she was a psycho. So she just flushed it down the toilet and reminded me that if I said anything Bridazilla would probably have both of us arrested. I realized she was right of course. And it didn't help I was really drunk. When she saw I was backing down. She laughed and explained that her IUD was the copper kind with no hormones to stay behind in her body to prevent ovulating and that with any luck Bridazilla would be showing a baby bump by her wedding day. At first I was going to keep my mouth shut, but I had second thoughts and felt guilty and tried to contact Bridazilla later to warn her somehow but she wouldn't return my calls and texted me that she was angry at me for inviting our pregnant friend out that night. She texted some really nasty things about her. So I decided Bridazilla really deserved what was coming to her, but I didn't want to bring an unwanted baby into the world. I spread a rumor that she had gotten really drunk that night and told us she was getting her IUD removed because she wanted to make sure her fiancé was on the hook with the baby just in case he got cold feet before the wedding. Word got back to him, and he insisted on checking for her strings himself and then dragging her to the walk-in clinic when he couldn't feel them. By the end of her exam the wedding was off. Word is she just got a DNC, so not only did we get revenge on her for being a total beach, we also saved a nice guy from a bad marriage. I screwed his brains out last weekend. He deserved it, and so did she. Ro, you made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content more It's free and that's a great price.